If I was going to make a list of the most hyped games in the strategy or historical genre, Manor Lords would definitely be the top. Something about it just connected with people. Whether it was the longing for a new settlement builder, an amazing attention to detail in the time period or setting, or perhaps the perfect mix between building a colony and then full out RTS battles with medieval knights and bannermen. But hey, whatever it is, I get messages every day asking what's going on with the game to give updates on the latest info we have. Overall, I try and hold back making such videos in constant succession as oversaturation will actually start to play a part. But after seeing some of these new screenshots, I had to take the bait because these new Manalord screenshots are next level beautiful. As a quick overview, Manalords is a full medieval colony builder, building up from the beginning from villages into towns and cities, building roads to connect to other settlements that you have agreements with. Maybe in your region you can't get certain resources, so you can either decide to use diplomacy, trade with a town nearby, or even go to war with them. The regions are overlooked by a king, who appoints lords to different situations and roles. But of course, building up an army whilst not being the main objective of the game is possible in these total war RTS style battles. But alas, I have many videos talking about the general gist of Man Lords and everything that we've seen in the past. But these new screenshots show us the first start into the wilderness of the game, a small village of the early stages of the game loop. Once starting a new game, you won't have much, a few settlers and resources if that. So building homes is a must, not only to survive the harsh winters, but to kickstart the future of your soon to be bustling town. The scenery in the shot looks gorgeous, something many developers tend to go for especially when the budget isn't quite there is a more cartoony look when it comes to graphics. Not only can it be sometimes easier to achieve but also gives the game a visual longevity that most realistic looks just don't afford you. But this isn't the case here. Even with a solo developed game like Man Lords, the attention to detail on making the terrain and scenery as realistic as possible is incredible. Of course we know that as a player you can be an architect laying down roads to give more efficiency to your settlements. But a mechanic we see popping up over and over again in these city builders are dynamic road systems and that's no different here. Villagers moving from place to place, doing their jobs whether it's cutting down trees or heading out to the farms in the morning. Over time paths will start to erode out from the landscape, from grass to mud then into fully trodden walkways. This is done beautifully in another game, Ostriv, a fellow historical city survival title and it looks like Man Lords will be doing a similar thing. One thing to note is that carts do need to be able to use specific roads in order to trade and of course despite the fact that your settlers can go off the beaten path sometimes especially built walkways are way more efficient and easier for villagers to use in order to get to their jobs as fast as possible. In this screenshot you can see the way that the puddles and the water forms and flows through the trodden roads and paths after a night of heavy rain bringing in so much detail to the surrounding areas. Now as your city grows you'll be able to experience so many changes through the buildings themselves. One such being seen is the basic chapel here. Starting off as a wooden structure but as you progress and upgrade your towns they can change. Move to stone instead providing much more stability and less chance of natural damage over time. But hey, this is what you're really here for, a spanning shot of a mid to late game town or city. The outer fields and residential housing. It has been hinted that jobs like construction and farming as we see in this screenshot are things that can be assigned to peasants to do. Some of the more basic things like building houses and workshops are given as jobs to the unassigned workers, whilst other professions like farming or more advanced things like smithing have to be physically assigned to your peasants. All of these things though are currently in flux, as it's clear the developer Slavic Magic is moving many of these mechanics around to what works and what doesn't when it comes to jobs and duties for peasants in order for your town to grow. Moving further in however we start to enter the town and boy this is when it gets to the next level. The work that has been put into the models of the buildings is unrivaled. The aesthetic choices feel so immersive. Imagine growing from a small set of houses to a bustling town and zooming in to see your work progress and pay off. We can see horses and carts entering the market in order to trade coming from lands far away bringing goods and resources. Resources that perhaps couldn't have been obtained in your own region so had to be outsourced in order to assist your own productions. One thing I did notice when these screenshots were released were a lot of comments from people noting about the lack of settlers on screen, civilians and peasants that roam the streets and markets. Whilst I agree it does look lacking from an outside point of view, I think it actually makes sense for this time period and the setting that's being targeted here. It wasn't a city centre, there weren't people around every corner shouting and trading at the 
market all times of the day, every day. This looks to be a small or medium sized town, not a big city. Now, will you be able to get to that point? Possibly, but this isn't what we're seeing here. Think of it like Rate from Kingdom Come Deliverance, a town where people were wandering around the streets, guards, tradesmen, drunkards, but it wasn't ram packed. Free time wasn't exactly commonplace. Most people would be working long hours on the farms or sweating in the smeltery trying to make ends meet, not wandering around the town aimlessly. Whilst by modern standards, this may look bare from the screenshots, but I think it's an assumption that doesn't quite fit what Manor Lords is aiming for. Additionally, in the more zoomed down screenshots, we can see the terrain deformation, the cart tracks in the sodden mud. With the new dynamic pathing system, it would be interesting to see if this is something that slowly forms over time, or how town squares come to be. With the overhead shots of the town itself, we can see roofs so well and expertly laid out. I'm assuming that town squares can almost be crafted by the player in terms of their location, but whether this is going to be a preset structure that can be placed down, or if these marketplaces and civilian hubs just naturally start to form over time. That's something that I'd really like to see. Some small extra notes to the additions of a few new team members. Yes, it started out as a solo development project, but now I think Slavic Magic has started to introduce some more people to help. Most notably, a character artist to help progress and improve the look of the civilians and soldiers in Manor Lords, helping to expand the world in the realistic immersive look. But why is this something notable? Why am I telling you about this? Well, the character artist in question had a quite a big piece of work a few years ago. This was none other than Kingdom Come Deliverance. The modelling and the look of many of the surrounding NPCs making that game what it was. And if I'm going to be honest with you, the way Manor Lords is going, it almost starts to feel like an RTS city builder version of KCD, using the same realism and styles of immersion to bring players into this medieval world, only with an overhead camera and different gameplay mechanics separating them. This is something I cannot wait for and has been sourly missed in the city building genre. Slavic Magic finally mentions that we should be getting some dev blogs very soon, some more footage and hopefully info, so I'll be covering and keeping you guys up to date, so make sure you stick around the channel if you haven't subscribed already. But other than that, please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, give some feedback down below or leave a dislike if you didn't. But until then, I will see you in the next one.